Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said the cognac. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane. And welcome back to Cognac's Corner. In another moment, we will be watching another fabulous video but first don't forget to subscribe to my channel and always press the notification button to let you know when i will be publishing a new video and also darlings don't forget to leave me a comment let me know what you think about my videos and what other type of videos you'd like me to make let's get to the video pink champagne kisses Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Wallalane. I'm here with Vicki Schneps, and she's going to tell us what this event is really all about. Well, you know, I'm wearing a crown because each one of these women has earned a crown of glory because they are the power women of the East End, the power women of dance papers, and we celebrate them. We put the spotlight on them. We just make them know that they are appreciated, they're cherished, and they are so successful. Gorgeous. Tell us where we should go to find out more information. Dancepapers.com. Let's do an air kiss. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> we'll be back, darlings, with more interviews right here in the Hamptons. Keep watching. Pink champagne kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane. Keep watching. More celebrity interviews coming up right here at Cognac's Corner Magazine.com. Pink champagne kisses. To be here, and let's give a big round of applause for the Queen of Media, Victoria Schnapps. And her daughter, Elizabeth, and Tony, and the whole team of Schnitz Media. Sammy in the back, raise your hand. And I, you, you own how many? Over 100 papers and magazines now. And uh, what a power woman she is for bringing us all together this evening. I represent the Upper East Side of the New York State Assembly. And in November, my legislation, the New York State Equal Rights Amendment, will be on the ballot as Proposition 1. I want you to flip your ballot over and read it. 
It promotes women and fights against discrimination for a wide variety of groups. As we know, Vicki is the godmother of the disability rights movement. 1937. Wow. It was 167 years ago that our suffragettes came to Albany to fight for equal rights and we're finally going to pass it in New York State. Thank you all. It really is in all the philosophy she does around the world. Thank you very much, Vicki. And the first thing I want to do is congratulate all of my fellow honorees. You all are special women doing important work. And as you go on your journey, you will see that the only one you should ever compete with is yourself. My name is Jean Shafaroff. I am the author of the book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. Georgina Bloomberg, Mike Bloomberg's daughter, wrote the introduction. As you all know today, he just pledged 600 million to Howard University, and he's pledged a lot of money. And I'm very happy to have that Bloomberg philanthropy endorsement through Georgina Bloomberg. I also host a TV show called Successful Philanthropy. It airs six times a week in the Hamptons, and I've interviewed about 200 different people, celebrities, politicians, a few fellow philanthropists, and mostly the heads of charities so that I can help shine a light on what they do. In addition, I serve on seven charity boards. I'm also on, uh, most of them are international. A lot of them get government funding. I'm also very involved in the Hamptons. Um, I'm on an honorary board in addition to the seven boards and then an honorary trustee of a ninth board. I've chaired about 150 galas I host a number of parties in my home, different homes that I underwrite, which means I pay for the parties in full. And those are for charity. And I love what Vicki is doing because she's giving all women a platform. And while I'm here, I just want to acknowledge New York State Assemblywoman Rebecca C. Wright, who does so much for the state of New York. And I, don't, I want to thank Kathy Hochul for having a representative here. Thank you very much for being here. And again, I want to congratulate all of my honorees because we all are working, not as individuals, but as a team to move this world forward. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a good night. created fragrances for about 25,000 people and it's amazing how people react when you hug them and they say you smell wonderful. <laughs> it's a, an amazing thing. So I am so grateful to be here. I'm an author. My book is The Power of Perfume and I literally help people regain their sense of smell every day. It's powerful. Think about this the next time you go to a store and you try the fragrances. Try a fragrance that appeals to you and makes you feel confident and sexy and wonderful. Thank you, Vicki. It's wonderful to be here. And congratulations to everybody. Thank you for being here. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Weller Lane. And shortly we will be attending uh, the Muse in the Hamptons to celebrate Schnepp's Power Women 30 as they are honoring many, many people. And one of the interesting people that they will be interview they will be honoring is Ms. Sue Phillips. She is an author, she's a fragrance queen, and the CEO of Centerprise Inc. She is being honored today. And I'm so very happy to have as my guest for this particular segment on my TV show, Cognac's Corner, Ms. Sue Phillips. Sue, I'm thrilled that we could speak together, we could talk. Now, you are receiving this award. Tell my audience what this award is about. 
Well, this is a very special award because it's by Schnepps Media and they are honoring women. Dance Papers. Dance Papers, Vicky Schnepps. And I'd met Vicky a few years ago and um, I saw her again in the Hamptons a few weeks ago and she said, Sue, 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 I'm so happy to see you. And she knew what I was doing. And so I am being honored tonight. Um, there are women who are past honorees, present honorees, and future honorees. So that's the Power Women 30. And I guess I'm a past honoree because she interviewed me many years ago. And, yes, uh, yes. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm happy to see you, yes. Cognac. So you're, you are thrilled to be receiving this award tonight. Yes. How many women are they honoring? It's all women. It's all women. I think there are about 30 or 40. Wow, that many. I think so. I think there are about maybe 30. 30. And of course, everybody has a significant thing that they do. They're, most of them are entrepreneurs, and they're being honored for their excellence in what they do and all the, the organizations that they have created. Exactly. I think it's wonderful that, you know, they're honoring women who are entrepreneurs. I'm a entrepreneur, a, an entrepreneur. A centrepreneur. I love it. I love it. Now, tell my audience, um, I mean, I know because we, I've done this interview before, but there are many people out there that may not know your whole story. Tell my audience your first experience that made you fall in love with perfume. What was your very first experience? You know, I have to say it goes back to memories with my mom. My mom would go out at night. I'm from South Africa, and my mom would go out at night. She'd wear a beautiful fragrance that it was, at, at that time, I think it was called Mink and Pearls, and she was dressed. Mink and Pearls. pearls. What, a, what, a, what a fabulous name, right? And she would go out at night and she was dressed up and she, she was such a glamorous woman and she would wear this fragrance and the fragrance would linger in my bedroom because she kissed me goodnight. So I never felt that she had left me, my brother and I were together. And she would go out and the fragrance would linger and I always felt comf comfortable and comforted because her fragrance was in the air. And so I never felt that, you know, we were left alone without mommy and daddy. But it was lovely. and. You know, the second very important aspect was when I was, uh, I think, 12 years old, and as I was in a store like Bloomingdale's, and I got a holiday job as a, as a student, and it was in a store like Bloomingdale's called Belfast, and I was in the fragrance area, and I reached into the counter for a bottle of perfume and unfortunately dislodged one that was on the outside, and the fragrance spilt, and I felt so bad. <coughs> anyway... At the end of the day, it's embarrassing. At the end of the day, um, I said to the manager, "You know, I'd be happy to to pay for the bottle of perfume that I brought." We sold more perfume that day because it spilt and the fragrance wafted in the air. So that was my first exposure to ambient scenting, environmental scenting, and how powerful it was that you know the bottle had spilt on the floor, but the fragrance wafted into the air. And as people and customers were walking by the counter, they smelled the fragrance and they loved it and they bought it. How fascinating is that? But getting back to your mother's perfume, Mink and Pearls, do you, do you know what the notes of that perfume were? I think it was a fragrance by Revlon, and it was a very rich, beautiful floral fragrance. That's all I remember about the fragrance. And I could actually look up the notes because people have asked me about it, and I have actually done some research about it. Is it still in existence? No, it's not, but isn't it a great name? Yes, you should, you should create another version of that. Well, I do a lot of that. A lot of people come to me and ask me about fragrances that have been discontinued, and can I recreate them? And I actually created the Tiffany fragrance. Did you really? The Tiffany fragrance, wow. The Tiffany fragrance. So when I came to America, so I came to America, I wanted to be a singer and an actress. It sounds like me. Exactly. And the, uh, the immigration attorney said to me, forget it. We have thousands of out of work singers and actresses. We don't need another one. What else do you do? And I said, I had done a secretarial in a business course. And he said, were you any good? And I said, yes. And that's how I got into America. I worked for him. He processed my green card. And I worked for him. And at night, I'd go singing and acting and getting involved in the theater, theatrical community. And after a year, when I finally got you, I didn't know that you could sing. I was a singer, yeah. Wow! And I'm still an actress. Your voice is a dead ringer for Julie Andrews. You know that. <laughs> yes, darling. Oh yes, indeed. We did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Julie Andrews, all the way. 
Um, and so I landed up at Elizabeth Arden in training and product development and marketing. And then Lancome hired me as marketing director for fragrance and men's skincare. And then Cognac, if you'd have told me growing up in South Africa, I would be executive vice president of Tiffany, I'd say you're crazy. They hired me to become the executive vice president and I landed up creating the first original Tiffany fragrance for their 150th anniversary. So that's how really you're, how it all started for you in the uh, scent, in the fragrance uh, arena. Yes. Yeah. And when you and I met many, many years ago. Oh, many, many years ago. was at the, one of the Trump Tower. Black Tie Mag magazine. Black Tie Magazine, yes. exactly. Jerry, so you had to interview this lady. She, she is wonderful. She's all about perfume and fragrance, and she's great. You, got, you have to interview her. I said, of course, Jerry, I'll interview her. And I'll never forget, you were my first person who interviewed me, and it was, we were at that uh, Black Tie Magazine event. Which is still in existence, uh, by the way, but online. Not yes. public, they don't publish a hard copy anymore. And um, so I created the Tiffany fragrance, and that was sort of my American claim to fame. Uh, then I had my daughter, and I started my own company, which I called Centerprises, Scent and Enterprises. And at that time, I created fragrances. People found me, and they heard me. Headhunters heard, heard about me. And I created fragrances for Avon for five years. I remember you telling me this. Diane from Furstenberg, and I just saw Diane a few weeks ago. She's wonderful. Diane, uh, Avon Begins at Home, Beauty Begins at Home. For Trish McAvoy and for Burberry, I created the Burberry fragrance. So these all these different fragrances in these it's companies. Like a, it's like a songwriter, you know, like you write the song for the talent. They, You are really the person that's writing the song. Well, the thing is that it's so interesting because fragrance has to be about the brand or the person. It's not just my taste. You know, if a company comes to me and says, Sue, we want to create a fragrance, I have to put my taste aside and say, oh, what is the brand essence? What is the brand ethos? What is that celebrity or designer or brand renowned for? What is their, their, their quintessential difference? And so I have to put myself in their shoes and decide what is appropriate for the brand. And we do a lot of research and, and consumer research as well as independent research you know what does tiffany stand for tiffany stands for luxury it's a beautiful it's glamour yeah, yeah glamour it's luxury if we would have come up with a, a very synthetic cheap fragrance it there would have been a disconnect but you know i find that even some of the fragrances that they manufactured today a lot of the fragrances even if they're expensive they don't last they i mean i've i i don't know if you ever see my uh, Instagram. Of course, yes. of course. I have a lot of fragrances, but I'm going to tell you, there's only like maybe three of them that I really adore. I love T Rose. I love Chanel Number no. Five, and I love. I'm wearing. Uh, actually, I'm wearing Gardenia right now. Yes, Elizabeth Taylor's Gardenia, but this very and white shoulders I mixed it a little bit white because white shoulders has gardenia in it but there's very few fragrances in my opinion that really last like you put them on and an hour goes by you cannot even smell it anymore so there's a reason for that the reason yeah, they for want that. you to spend more money <laughs> that also <laughs> that also but the certain ingredients sadly have been banned by the FDA and the certain regulatory bodies because they're saying that they give you know, allergens. So certain ingredients that were giving long-lasting notes have been banned because of these regulatory bodies. And something like, like peanuts, where people are eating peanuts all the time. People get anaphylactic shock from peanuts. Have they banned peanuts? No. But certain fragrance ingredients like... Um, a really beautiful oak moss and patchouli have been banned because they say they give them out, they give people ad headaches and allergies. But so I still see them in the notes. I know, but it, they're synthetic. Synthetic. They're synthetic. I see, and that's the reason why these fragrances lot, really don't last. A lot of the times, the fragrances don't have the strength or the robust notes that natural ingredients have. Is there a, a certain uh, note that has a tendency? Out of all the other notes, I would think vanilla would be one of them. So vanilla can be both amazingly wonderful and also can be bad. You know, it all depends on the memory. Think about this. If you were a little child and you hurt yourself and your mom and dad gave you an ice cream or a vanilla lollipop or an ice cream to make you feel better, maybe you would feel better and say, oh, I love vanilla. It makes me feel better. 
what happens if you were that same kid and you fell and you broke your, 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 your foot and you were in such pain and you got that same vanilla lollipop or ice cream, the memory of that would give you a bad memory. And so for the rest of your life, you'd all say, I don't like vanilla. So it's all to do with the memory and the emotion. Yeah. This is a very important part of our lives, and it really captivates memories or in a wonderful or negative yes. way. Our sense of smell is actually our most powerful sense. It's the one sense that connects memory and emotion. And so it also connects scent and taste. Mm -hmm. So what you wear and who you meet and how the, the emotion that you encounter can also trigger certain memories. And also, you know, during COVID, many people lost their sense of smell because of COVID anosmia. And I actually happened to help more than 250 people regain their sense of smell. Let me ask you something. I've noticed if I spray t too much perfume on myself, I, I get what you just said. What did they call? Anosmia. Yes, anosmia. You lose your sense of smell. Why, do, why does that happen when you spray too much fragrance on yourself? Because people who are not used to wearing fragrance or trying fragrances, your nose gets fatigued. It's called nose fatigue, where you have so many different fragrances or too much fragrance that you land up, you, you, you suffocate your nose. So Fascinating. So it's, the literal term is anosmia, but it yes. means nose fatigue. Yes, I know. I want to talk to you a little bit more about Centerprises. Centerprises creates and customizes perfumes for all individuals. Now, tell us about some of the celebrities, because not only individuals that come into your store, but there are major, major celebrities like Zandella, that, Zendaya. Yeah, Zendaya, excuse me, that has, uh, has used your fragrances. Tell us some of the other celebrities that you've worked with. So it's been so exciting. So the first big celebrity um, who came to my boutique downtown was Jamie Foxx. And actually it was his people who contacted me. They said, we're here near Bloomingdale's. We'd like to meet with you. And I was actually leaving my boutique, which was downtown. And I said, well, I'll meet you down, you know, come back downtown. And they came to make a fragrance and they kept on talking about Foxy. And I kept on saying, who's Foxy? I didn't know who Foxy was. Anyway, finally, they, they, they uh, told me two days later, because they took the fragrance that I made, mm -hmm. and they said, we have um, somebody who's going to come to see, are you available on Sunday? I said, yes, I actually am available. They said, okay, Foxy is coming. I said, Who the hell is Foxy? James, Jamie Fox showed up at my boutique. Susan Sarandon too, right? Susan Sarandon, Jamie Fox, um, Katie Holmes, because at the yes. time, Jamie and Katie were dating. So Jamie had come to meet with me. And then three weeks later, he told Katie, Katie came down, she met with me. Um, and then a few months ago, about two months ago, I got a call from Jamie's uh, manager who said that he was in town, he wanted to meet with me. So he came again to meet with me up at my new boutique. And he's just wonderful, such a fabulous man, wonderful, happy, uh, so considerate and so charming. He's just a great guy. Is there a certain fragrance that people tend to want more than others are there like some people like is it like is a generalization i know it's basically everybody has their own opinions about fragrance but is there something that's more popular that people are tend to uh, actually like more now well there are certain trends in fragrance yes and i will tell you the trend right now is oud o-u-d which is yes i've been seeing that all Baccarat over the place baccarat rouge it is everywhere and i said to somebody today i said the two things that i smell most on the streets are marijuana and baccarat rouge yeah, that, everyone and that's like six hundred dollars for that is it really worth it well it depends it depends it depends if you like it or not and now there are so many knockoffs you know yeah. That's what happens. Um, people follow the trend. And something that's so different and so innovative and so, you know, completely different to what's the norm suddenly takes hold and suddenly everybody likes to see it. It becomes a cult, like almost like a cult fragrance. Um, so this has happened over the years. Do you rem well, you mentioned Tea Rose, remember? Yes, I, re yes I still wear it. Georgia Beverly Hills, that was yes, a huge. Yes. That was another favorite of mine. And then, and then the trend changed. Instead of these big, bold, big floral perfumes, suddenly everything was very, and it happened in the 90s when all the, you know, sort of the big 
shoulder pads and the big fragrances were diluted and the economy shifted. It became what we call these watery, transparent fragrances, so very green. Remember Isimiyaki, the fragrance? Yes, I, of course I do. It went completely from big and bold and floral to watery and ozonic, and then it became the idea of celebrity fragrances and then um, uh, designer fragrances. And then there was a trend of going back at the time of the mille millennial millennium, um, where nobody really knew what was going on in the 20... I'm dating myself, but, you know, then the classics came back, the Chanel Number no. Fives and the Sh Shalimars came back. And now it's all about this oud, and the biggest trend right now is customization. So what I'm so happy about is that people are looking to really customize their own fragrances. And I always say, why wear what everybody else wears when you can create and wear your own and reflect your individuality and your personality? Why? Do you believe in layering fragrances? I believe in layering the same kind of fragrance. So for instance, if you want your fragrance to last, you need to wear unscented lotions, unscented soaps, unscented bath and body products. Because if you wear a scented soap and a scented gel and a scented hair conditioner, a scented product, all these different they're scents competing. are going to compete and they're going to ruin and overtake your beautiful you know, $200 bottle of perfume. That's what I did. I put a uh, plain lotion and I mixed it with the uh, sh uh, shoulders, white shoulders. White shoulders. And that's the way you can layer. So if you have the matching lotion or the matching gel or soap, that's great. Not many people have matching shoulder uh, uh, products uh, that are unscented or that are scented. So what you could do is take an unscented lotion, which you can get at this pharmacy, and then spray some of your perfume into the lotion so that you can apply it to your body. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I do. And then you spray your perfume over it. Now, I want the, my last question is, tell us about your book, The Power of Perfume. I wrote my book, The Power of Perfume, at the time of the pandemic because everything closed down. You know, I had my boutique downtown and everything was going great and suddenly the pandemic arrived. And... I had decided, and I had written many, many articles for magazines as an industry expert, and I thought to myself, this is the time to do it. So I wrote my book, and I called it The Power of Perfume because I realized how powerful perfume is. It can make you feel confident and sexy and sensual and happy, and it can just change your whole mood. And so looking at the history of fragrance, I, I created this and I wrote this book. Well, the day before, well, actually, NBC wanted to do an interview. And so the day before the interview, they contacted me and they said, Sue, do you think you can help somebody who's lost their sense of smell for 15 months? And I said, well, I don't know, but I'll try. And I had found this pop-up boutique at Vanessa Noel's boutique. And I was in Manhattan. In Manhattan. And um, the woman came in with a TV crew. And I took her on what I called a scent healing journey. And she kept on smelling one strip, two strips, three, four, five, ten. She couldn't smell a thing. And and the TV crew wasn't sure what to do. This is ne you know they'd never had the situation where they thought they could help somebody and they weren't sure what the results would be. When she got to the fourteenth blotta strip, she smelt it and she said, oh, "I smell something and it's beautiful." And she started to cry. It oh was my so God! Beautiful. It was so emotional can you imagine not being able to smell and or taste for 15 months and she was suddenly able to smell and it wasn't because it was one particular ingredient I think what I did was I was able to tell her to really connect the olfactory with the limbic system and to try and ask her to smell with her brain because fragrance is so powerful and so she was able to as I say get rid of the cobwebs and open up the pathways so that she was able to smell. And the story went viral, and I've helped about 250 people regain their sense of smell. How marvelous. And so much so that a neuroscientist from Canada has now contacted me to, and we're actually writing a book which will be done by the end of September. So that's going to be very exciting to really be able to help people through the power and the passion of perfume that I have to help people regain their sense of smell because COVID and osmia is still out. A lot of people still have it. Yeah. Tell me, Sue, how did you meet my fabulous friend, Beverly Gelb? You know, fragrance brings people together. So I have to tell you the story. About 
two weeks, three weeks ago, I get a call from a, an old client friend of mine. He said, Sue, I want to create a fragrance for a very dear friend of mine, Beverly. You'll love her. I didn't know who she was. And I said, well, who is she? He's, he told me all about her. And so I didn't, couldn't really create a fragrance, but I met her. I was in the Hamptons and I wanted to meet her and we made an arrangement to come and get together. So I met her and we had this wonderful relationship in, me, in media chemistry. And we just had bonded with, through friendship. Well, I went home and knowing her personality and seeing how wonderful and generous and beautiful. She's very vivacious. Vivacious and gorgeous. And, and I created a fragrance. And very glamorous too. And I, I think, and I said to her, Beverly, I love your fragrance. I love you. And it's wonderful. She said, well, it's friendship. I said, that's it. That's the name. Friendship. I created the fragrance for her and I sent it to her. And, and she loves it. And she loves it. And so here I am this weekend. And then she told me that cognac is coming. I said, there's only one cognac. So look at that. There's only one cognac. That's true. There's only one of me. <laughs> and how wonderful that Sal, Dr. Sal, wanted to create a fragrance to thank Beverly for her friendship with him. We met. We bonded. We created this wonderful friendship. I created a friendship, a fragrance for her. I'm here now, and she told me you're coming. So think about it, the importance, the power of fragrance. What it's done, it's brought us all back together. And the, and the power it has, because it brings out our emotions, positive and negative, it doesn't matter. It's something that lasts eternally. Am I right? Absolutely. And so I'm here this weekend with this incredible honor at the Southampton. I'm staying at wonderful Beverly and Ken Gelb. She invited me to stay and you're here. So how lucky am I and grateful to be here with my friends and you. What a fabulous, what a wonderful weekend and what a wonderful celebration. Now it's All through fragrance. Now it's time for us to party. Exactly. The exciting news, darling. Tell us, tell us, <laughs> tell us the exciting news. So, about two years ago, I get a call from a company from Dubai, and they said, We've been watching you. We think you can be the Joe Malone of America. And I very cheekily said, No, I want to be Sue Phillips of the world. <laughs> they brought me to Dubai, and we were having this big press release, and they were going to really put my, biz, my, my brand together and build a Sue Phillips brand around the world. Well, sadly, it didn't work out because there was a fight between the partners. Yeah, that always uh, happens. Another company contacted me, and we're in the process right now of developing my Sue Phillips brand, and I'll be launching it in Exence in February in Milan next year. How exciting. exciting. Very, very exciting. Sue, you are marvelous. You are beautiful, and it's always inspiring to talk to you. Tell my audience where we could go to find out more information. Do you have a website? I do. I have suephillips.com with double L, Sue Phillips, double L. I'm on Instagram at Scentfully Sue, The Real Sue Phillips, Sue Phillips Fragrance, and my company, Centerprises. I'm actually all over the internet under Sue Phillips Fragrance. And Cognac, I just want to say that you have been such an inspiration because you have been doing this for so long. You look amazing. You do your research. It's fantastic. And I'm so thrilled and honored to see you. I'm honored to see you and talk to you. Thank you. Let's do an air kiss, darling. Mwah. Mwah. And we'll be back in a moment with more interviews right here in the Hamptons, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a ballet blonde, fabulously dressed to impress. One of a kind girl I was brought into this world Wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle Though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne When first 
dazzling diamond jewelry, a girl can't complain. I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh. I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.